Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my pepper garden. It's 2024 and this is the first opportunity that we've got to go and look at the community project peppers. Uh, we're getting towards the end of July here and things are just growing like crazy. Uh, we've just had about a week of straight rain. Uh, we probably got four or five inches and before that we had two to three weeks of 100 degree weather. So we've really stressed and challenged the plants this year. But for a plant breeder, that's great. If we can tear something down, let's do it. Let's get rid of it. Let's find the stuff that survives. All right, before we get into looking at the uh, plants here, um, this garden space is new for me for 2024. Uh, I did a little bit of research and I decided to do a high density planting. And so that's accomplished with these double rows. So there's three feet between double rows and then the pepper plants are staggered at 18 inches. Um, I was fortunate enough to get them on drip this year. And so this is drip tubing, not drip tape. And you can see the emitters there, they're spaced at every, in, every 18 inches. And I'm on heavy clay soil here, so I'm using um, half a gallon per hour. And I run it for about 30 minutes. And that seems to be doing pretty good for this point in the year. This is our first row here. Um, everything is laid out and it's uh, plotted against a map. And you can see the map here. So we're actually looking at row 6A and 6B, and you can see that the first two plants are PD4 and PD5, and we have six of each, and these are followed by PD10 and 11, PC24, so that's actually two years old, I'm going back to an F2, and then we have PD12, PC25, and PC25 split across two rows. So what the hell does all that mean? Ah, there's a code. Right, so my printer sucks ass, but you can see on the left we've got the ID codes, you can see the generation, and then you can see a free text description of what the cross is. So again, we're looking at PD4 and 5, right, and then PD4 and 5, so these are actually Shiro Roja by SC, and that's crossed IHR PETA, and we are currently in the F4, so things are getting pretty stable. And my goal here is just to select an F5. And we're looking for interesting fruit phenotypes and then the standard selection criteria of size and flavor. So let's look at the plants. So PD4, PD5, these are uh, full sib uh, populations. So they share both of the same parents, um, but they were selected in the F2 and so they do have varying and different genetics here. Um, Shira Roja by SC has kind of been a disappointing uh, cross. Almost all the progeny get this leaf cracking from the high humidity and the rapid growth. Uh, they've been a little late to set fruit. Uh, we're still waiting for a lot of fruit set here. Um, but we'll wait and see. Um, we'll make a selection or two out of here and then probably cross it to something a bit more high quality. So those are the first sets there. So the next one we see a tag for PD10, and I don't see another tag, so we'll cheat. So it's PD10 and PD11. And we go up here, PD10, 11. So we have IHR PETA by Habanada, again with the F4. And Pink Habanero Long by IHR PETA, also in the F4. Pink Habanero Long, not my favorite plant. It had some really, ish, really big issues with quality. Um, the fruit, had no flavor, they had problems with blossom and rot, and the plant architecture itself was kind of shit. Um, the reason we selected it though was that Pink Habanero Long has a mutant for a lack of capsaicinoids. And it's called PAMT, PAMT, right? So this is not the same mutation that you see in Habanada. This is uh, distinct. With this one, this is where you get heat at the center of the fruit. We call it the placental tissue, so the, the tissue around the seeds will be hot, but the outer flesh will not. Um, the other mutant that's with habanada, this is called a PIN1 mutant, and so this mutant is earlier on in the uh, capsaicinoid pathway where the, the broken gene occurs, and this one you get no heat at all in the fruit anywhere. And so two mutations, similar phenotypes, but actually quite distinct and quite different. Um, my interest in this PAMT mutant is that it is later in the carotenoid, carotenoid, capsaicinoid pathway, and so you still get these precursor capsaicinoids, and these are kind of like a phytonutrient, right? And so if you have the PIN1 mutation, you're knocking out all of 
your capsaicinoids and you don't get any of that phytonutrient benefit. But with these PAMT mutants, you still get those capsaicinoids, you still get that phytonutrient benefit. So despite the fact that all of these plants look like shit and are late to flower, look at this, just getting absolutely torn up. And then once they get cracked like this, I'm getting pill bugs coming in and feeding on the, uh, the tissue. So. Lots of work to be done here on plant architecture, uh, but hopefully we'll move this mutant forward. And this guy here, right, so he got a disease. I think he got like bacterial spot and just completely melted all the leaves. And this is an unrelated cross and the same thing happened here. So I think we just got uh, high, high disease pressure and just really the susceptible plants got taken out. So in reality, I should just rip that guy out, but you know, I've got too big a heart for that. So we'll let him grow and just see what the hell happens, but he's done for, he'll never be selected. All right, and so moving down the row, look at how the bacterial spot affected the lower leaves in that plant, that's crazy. So we got PD-12 and we got PC-24. All right, PD-12 is another habanata cross and 24 is another pink habanero long. So PC-24, I mean, this fir first plant looks okay. It may just be that he's getting more light and nutrients. Not that guy's dead. But again, quality is kind of low. Um, PD-12 is habanata, and so we do expect slightly better quality here. Um, we got some fruit set coming finally. Um, actually got some fruit on that first bifurcation. Uh, same down here, so that's good. That's good. That's an earlier harvest. Uh, higher yields given a um, constrained growing season. Um, yeah, not the best looking plants, but that's what plant breeding is. You're trying to select one in a thousand, so that's hopefully what we'll find in here. But look at this guy setting just tons of flowers and fruit. That's that ahi charapita trait coming through. All right, so we'll go back and we'll we'll start walking the next row. All right, so we're back at the head of the row here, and so we have PD3, and we lost the damn tag, which happens all the time out here. That's why we make a map. All right, so we have PD3, and we have PC2. That's the guy I don't have a tag for. All right, so PC2 is supposed to be yellow Brazilian starfish by Sugar Rush Peach and an F3. I can tell you by looking at those plants, that's not what that is. So this is probably like one of the Shira Roja or Habanata crosses. Uh, so we'll see what the fruit look like, but that's not what it's meant to be. Maybe that's why I took the tag out. And then we have PD3, and that's Habanata by Ahicharpita again at the F4. And we're selecting for excellent flavor, nothing but the best. So these Habanata plants, they look a lot better than the Shira Roja and Pink Habanero Longs. You can see we're getting a lot of fruit and we're getting it down low. Um, that guy doesn't have it at the first bifurcation, but he does have fruit at the second, and that's what you wanna see. Um, also speaking about that bifurcation, and that's when that plant makes that first split, right? So that's not a great example, but it tried to do it there. Um, in a very good bell pepper, you want that first bifurcation at like 11, 12, or 13 nodes, right? And so that's the number of leaves that the plant has put out. If it bifurcates at 11, 12, 13 and sets a fruit, you're in good shape because that means it's going to flower and fruit early. And if you have a short growing season, that's gonna maximize your yield. And so that's something that we select for as pepper breeders. And this is the mystery guy. And so we have six plants of don't know. Um, but looking at those leaves, it looks a lot like those Shiva Roja crosses. Um, but we'll know more once the fruit set, but really just not the prettiest plants. And again, the weather has not been doing favors to anybody this year. So we've got the next family down there is going to be a PD-8. I don't think it's focusing quite right. And there should be another tag around here. Yes. PD-8 and PD-9. Hold on. All right. PD-8, PD-9, six and seven of these plants. And eight is habanata and nine is pink hab long. Uh, both of these are F4s. Yeah, and we're just looking for the mutants. Um, PD8 is looking pretty good. And that's the habanata cross again. That's the one on the left side of the screen here. And on the right is 
uh, pink cab long. And again, just what you would call um, abiotic t disease. So disease is just having like negative symptoms and an effect on your phenotype. And disease can be biotic, like the um, bacterial leaf spot we just saw, or it can be abiotic, like this humidity cracking, right? Um, both are diseases. Both typically have a heritable element to the disease. And so as plant breeders, we really have to work to get this shit out of there. I mean, who wants to grow that? It looks like shit. Certainly not a farmer. Every one of those cracks is an opportunity to introduce disease as well. So it's really a negative trait that we're really going to have to work on. And you can see here, we have some sort of change between families here. And so we're looking at PC3 and PC4 over there. PC3 and 4, Fidalga Roja and Habanada. So the row right to us is supposed the row on the right is supposed to be the Fidalgo Roja crosses. And you can see we're getting really good flower and fruit set on that first node there. So that's a promising sign. This guy though, same family, and we don't have the same kind of fruit set. So again, um, these were selected in the F2 and there was a lot of diversity. And so that's what we're just seeing here. Okay. And then we've got uh, the habanada plants on the other side here and you can kind of see the different leaf shape habanada has that much bigger uh, Kind of chinense leaf shape that we're all a bit more used used to Not as much problem with the cracking It's kind of a cool plant a little short though for this time of year uh, Not as much problem with cracking So a little bit higher quality parent to start with than that pink habanero long or that shy roja and then I'm like five years late, but I'm growing Kangstar White Thai. And if you look, one of these things is not like the other. So I got some kind of purple anum mixed in with my seeds here, so we'll have to see what the hell these are. Some random cross. So that is what I've got for the community project. Uh, the other interesting thing that I can show you here is this is all of my hot sauce peppers. So usually when you go to a YouTube channel, it's somewhere in the first five minutes, the guy kind of does some awkward transition. He says, hey, if you want to support my channel, buy my gum, go to this news website, buy my gold. I'm not going to do that to you guys. What I'm going to tell you is go to pepperbreeding.com or go on Etsy and look for Tropical Tiger, right? So this is a Bacatum cross that I, I ran across in the you know, process of doing pepper breeding. And so this is an F1 with sugar rush peach crossed to a yellow bacatum out of my program. And these plants are super vigorous. Much more vigorous than most of the bacatums I'm growing because they got that hybrid vigor. And they produce striped orange fruit that have just the best tropical kind of citrusy flavor that you get in the bacatums. No disease, right? We just looked at all those chinenses getting hammered by different diseases. Not an issue here. I mean, I don't even have to stake these plants up for the most part. I mean, I grow high densities, so they, they kind of stretch, but these have just been bangers, just absolutely amazing plants. High quality, excellent hot sauce. All my colleagues are raving about it. So this year I went all the way in. I think I've got 18 or 20 plants here. So I'll have two to three pounds of peppers and I'll have gallons of hot sauce. So if you want to support me, if you want to support the community project, go to pepperbreeding.com. You can get seeds for all of these populations there and you can grow them yourself and you can hunt phenotypes yourself. Or if you just want to grow something that's already stable and high quality, go pick up Tropical Tiger. Again, you can get that on the website or you can get it on Etsy if you don't trust the random internet guy. So that's all for today. Um, I'll be back in two to three weeks and we'll hopefully be looking at peppers around then. Thank you guys.